Vinny was supposed to be working a 4 to 12 that night, but um, he did a, a tour change to do a day tour so he could go to school that night. Uh, you know, he was taking classes. So we had all worked together the night before on um, Monday. We worked together and, you know, nobody thought anything of it. You know, we figured we'd see him, you know, the following day. Of course, we all were home and we all saw what was going on and we did the same thing. Like Eddie said, we all called the office and we all came down. We were all down there uh, probably around 11 o'clock in the morning or so. Pretty much we got down there as quick as we could. Yeah, he was one of the first see? responders, yeah, he was responding. He was working in Manhattan that day. He he flew what we call flying. When you go from one truck to another, if they're short in one truck, mm -hmm. you go to that truck and work for the day in that truck. So it's a citywide unit. You just turn out of a truck and if you, you work in the Bronx, if they're short in Queens, you can go out to Queens and work. That day they were short in Manhattan and Vinny went down to work in Manhattan that day. He was in two. When we arrived down near Ground Zero, we, uh, the first thing that I noticed was the Brooklyn Bridge with all the people walking across as we were going down uh, towards the FDR. And it seemed kind of unreal in a sense because it was just thousands of people. It looked like some kind of refugee scene from a, a third world you know, type country. And we got off the FDR, we actually drove right next to Ground Zero without realizing it. And it was, what I can remember was just very dark, uh, a lot of confusion, a lot of firemen looking very dazed, a lot of equipment destroyed. As we were going through, a fireman came up to us and he said he found these memo books, the four memo books that they found in a burnt out van. And that's when I realized that there could be a lot of a lot of dead uh, police officers here. So we took them from them. The memo books are the personal books that each officer carries that he makes his log entries into during his uh, daily activities for the day. And uh, I remember all of us looking at them for a second. I really didn't have an idea of how many people we lost in our unit. And I was quite shocked when I did find out later on during that day, almost like horrified that so many guys could die like that so quickly. When I heard it was him the next day, later on during 9-11, and we found out who was missing, I was, uh, just couldn't believe it was Vinny. So much to digest as you were driving down there, because you could see the destruction, you could see it from the highway, but it didn't even register until you actually got closer. It was astronomical, the amount of, amount of things that were running through your mind on the, on the ride down there. And then when you arrived there, it was anything you'd thought about doing was out of your head by the time you got there and saw what was actually going on. But the one thing that I did notice was when we were in the Woolworth building getting mobilized and getting situated was just the amount of people that were in emergency that were already coming back, like guys that had been promoted, guys that were in school with me, um, guys that I hadn't seen since we got out of school were coming back, you know, what do we need, what do we do, you know, and just guys on duty, off duty, and just, you know, whatever, what needs to be done. In a real dark, dark hour, it gave you a little, a little boost of, you know, hey, let's, Let's get in there. Let's let's do what we got to do. You know, let's let's make a difference. Let's try to make a difference.